I think we all need to slow our roll a little bit when it comes to that potential tropical system developing in the Gulf two weeks from now. What's going on, guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Keg is back with you. In this video, we're going to separate the truth from the trash when it comes to those model runs being plastered all over social media, including YouTube. And then we're going to talk a little bit about the science behind why there could be a little uptick in tropical activity on the Atlantic side once we get into the middle of June. If you do want to stay updated on all things weather, especially as we roll into hurricane season without the hype, that's why this channel is here. Do me a favor, hit that subscribe button for me. At the very least, hit that thumbs up button. I'd appreciate that if you like the content, that is. And I would love it if you post in the comments where you're tuning in from and what the weather is doing at your present location. Here's the official outlook from the Climate Prediction Center. It does have some peach on our side of the basin, Southwest Gulf, Bay of Campeche, into the Western Caribbean, greater than 20% shot for a tropical system to develop in the time frame of June 11th through June 17th. You'll see, though, where the brighter color is, that red shaded area off the coast of Mexico. Uh, that's a greater than 40% shot in the Eastern Pacific Basin. They are likely going to get another name storm behind Elvin. That one will stay clear uh, away from land, at least clear from anything on the Atlantic side of things. The one thing I want to caution is that while we have a shot at tropical development on the Atlantic Basin side in that time frame, no one model is going to be able to pick up with any degree of certainty really anything. And I'm going to show you that now. We're going to go over some of the modeling, especially the GFS. And it's the GFS, the American model, that I do want to caution you looking at. It's the only model that's being shared by some of the hypesters on YouTube and social media because it's the only model that's showing a bona fide tropical system at this time. I preach it all the time. At this stage in the game, it's ensemble forecasting that you need to look at. We will look at some of that and break it down meteorologically uh, coming up in just one second. So this is the May 30th uh, early morning run, 8 o'clock in the morning run of the American GFS. It puts a hurricane in South Florida. I want to show you last night. This is just one of the reasons why uh, at this stage in the game, again, 10 to 14 days out, you can't put any kind of trust in it. This is what the model was showing last night. A hurricane north of the Yucatan, uh, far away from its current forecast of South Florida. So that's one of the reasons why that I caution using any individual model this far out. Again, that is going to be a, about 10, 11 days away. The other thing I caution uh, and to know what model you're looking at and to know what the hypesters might be showing is are other models showing it. If they post star, star, not a forecast, that doesn't count because it's a cop-out. They're not using any meteorology behind it. They're just posting the model for clicks. Again, all of this is a fair warning. As we head into hurricane season, I'm trying to save you guys some stress. Um, let me bear that stress because holy cow, it's May 30th as of this recording, and I'm already stressed out from the stuff that I've seen on social media. So here we go uh, as we roll through the next model. This is gonna be the European model. Same time frame, by the way. This is gonna be on uh, the evening of June 13th. Where's the storm? It's just not there. Uh, we do have a little area of disturbed weather in the Yucatan Channel, close to the Yucatan Channel in that time frame. No organized tropical system. Here's the Canadian. It hardly has rain in that area. This is through June 10th. That's and it doesn't go out as far, but at that point anyway, June 9th and 10th, there was something on the other two models indicating that there would be some kind of something developing at least on the GFS again to a much lesser degree the European side of things. So anytime anytime you see especially the lone GFS 300 hours out, you always have to ask yourself something are there other models posted with this and are other models showing it? Because that's going to be a dead giveaway. If it's only the GFS, uh, chances are it's trash. Um, that's just a little bit of a, of a heads up for you. This stage in the game, um, if you like looking at models, it's all going to be about ensembles. Some of the ensembles are a little bullish. Back in May, I'm going to go on a little story time. Back in May, the GFS was also at its antics, showing a phantom major hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico, Gulf of America, whichever you prefer. It's If I say Gulf of Mexico, it's just because of habit. If I say Gulf of America, 
it's the golf, whatever. Um, that's going to be wild this year, by the way. There is There was no meteorological or scientific backing for that model to be showing a tropical system getting going. This time around, anyway, there is an entity known as the Madden-Julian Oscillation that is going to be moving through. We'll get into that in a second, but just to kind of set the stage, there is some meteorological backing as to why models and ensembles are showing a little something-something trying to develop here. So here we go. This is going to be uh, the ensemble. This is uh, June 11th. This is the GFS ensemble. So you may imagine that it would be bullish because it's operational individual model shows a hurricane developing so there are a lot of members and all those different red numbers that's a pressure center where you see the brighter colors that is kind of a higher concentration of the ensembles uh hinting at something that is going to be there by the way why ensembles are much better to forecast at this stage in the game is because we just don't have a lot of information right now so in the ensemble, there are different initial conditions put into the model so that we can get a range of outcomes. And in that range of outcomes, if there is a consensus or kind of the makings of a consensus, there's a higher confidence that, okay, it raises eyebrows and we need to be paying attention to this. So I do think we need to be paying attention to something. It's just the lone model forecast that are painting a major hurricane in the Gulf in the middle of June that we need to watch out for. Is it possible? I mean, yeah, I guess it is possible. The water is juiced there because of big time high pressure that's in building. So the water is warm. Um, but it's that grain of salt thing. It's the caution. And it is, as of May 30th, 10 to 12 days away. There's no sense of getting in a tizzy when there's only one model showing that solution at this point. Okay, so that is the GFS ensemble. Here is the European ensemble. So it is much less bullish, but even though its parent model isn't showing anything, some of its ensembles are latching on. It's a low percentage. Now, there's 51 members, and we have, what, four or five showing some development, maybe six. That's still a low percentage of the ensembles um, latching on to something. As we get to the Canadian one, that is the... Uh, that is the that was the GFS again. This is the Canadian. It, it goes out through the 15th, and again, it's hardly anything. But I will admit that the Canadian missed Alvin almost completely. Um, so don't put any stock in that one. The point I'm trying to make is, and I don't want to sound contradictory by like saying, okay, don't pay attention to, the, to these lone model runs, but I do think that there could be something coming through the basin. You have to base what the model is showing by science. So is that GFS run plausible? Yeah, I guess so. But until we get more models online showing that, that is certainly an outlier. Now, some of the science behind why, the, why we're seeing an uptick in the ensembles, and we're going to talk about again why there needs to be a grain of salt taken with this, is the Madden-Julian oscillation. So what we are looking at right here, and let me get out the handy-dandy telestrator, this big giant green blob that is anomalous rising motion so we're looking at the vertical velocity at 200 millibars so this is going to be the upper level divergence when air diverges way up in the atmosphere it has to be replaced by something at the surface with convergence and when air converges it rises when you see that big bullseye of green in the eastern pacific and then a little appendage of it into the atlantic okay that's one of those things to get, hey, okay, we need to be looking out here for some tropical development. So there is a background of meteorology to explain why there could be development on the Atlantic side in the middle of June. Okay, so I want to be clear about that. The issue I have is, hey, Texas is getting a major hurricane. Wait, now today it's Louisiana. No, wait, now it's Florida. That doesn't do anybody any good and it's about two weeks away so that is that pulse coming through that is going to get that highlight going let me turn that off and that pulse also continues as we move to a lesser degree into the third week of june by the way if i take this further out look at all the brown that develops if we don't get anything or if we do i think the atlantic basically shuts down from the last week of june through a lot of july climatologically that's the 
one of the quietest periods of the hurricane season, late June, early July. It doesn't always work like that, but that's the pro tip to maybe get a discount on a cruise. Again, it doesn't all, we've had nasty hurricanes in the early going of July before. Um, so it's not always, but typically that's the case that late June to the first week or two of July, that's when we have a quiet stretch. Um, we're going to get into a suppressed phase of the MJO as we move out toward, this is through July 11th, that's through July 4th, and then this is through June 27th. So if there is no no tropical development with this entity, we might not get anything through um, maybe the middle of July, which obviously sign me up for, that's great. But again, I want to caution those individual model runs. That was the basis of this video and my little rantiness. Sorry, sometimes I get a little heated like that. Just because, again, I ha I've had people already ask. We, we posted our um, Outlook video, and you can, by the way, watch that in the end credits, or you can find that in, in the description um, to see our thoughts about some of the what we think are going to be the higher frequency tropical tracks. Um, people are already asking, do I need to do I need to stock up in Texas? Like, no, no, we're we're good right. We're we're good. In enjoy enjoy life, um, because again, while there's going to be a new video from somebody today, guarantee it that's going to highlight okay Florida, um, but in yesterday's video that I saw somebody do, Texas was getting slammed with a major hurricane. That does nobody good. It's impossible right now, especially it's going to be a weird, weird pattern. A lot of dips in the jet stream coming through. You're going to hear a lot about severe weather, a rare severe weather event in June coming. Um, and that is because of those dips in the jet stream that start to fade a little bit. But again, as I ramble on here, um, just be careful what you see on social media as we go into hurricane season. Find an entity that you trust that doesn't blatantly um, share model runs, loan model runs for clicks. Alrighty, guys, it's about all I have today. Remember, I do think that there's a chance for some tropical development, at the very least a moisture surge coming into parts of the Gulf and Caribbean because of that Madden Julian oscillation. It is just way too early to tell, way too early to even dissect where and what could be born from that anomalous this anomalous uh, area of rising motion brought on by the Madden-Julian Oscillation. It's a convective complex of thunderstorms. goes around the globe every 30 to 60 days as it enters, uh, exits the Pacific, and then enters the Atlantic Basin uh, through the first and into second week of June. Be safe, guys. Remember, be careful what you see on social media. We'll catch you soon. Have a great day.